What's up fam, Extraordinary Life with Elijah. And today, Bowden is my extra and I am the ordinary. It feels like, check me if I'm wrong, it feels like I haven't seen you guys since last year. It's because I haven't. You're watching this video on Sunday, January 7th, 2024 at 10.50 a.m. MST. That joke never gets old to me. I love it. Dad jokes are the best. I'm sure everybody else is long since tired of it, but that's the beauty of a dad joke. It just keeps on going and makes you a little sick inside. Lots of other firsts. Another awesome first is that I've passed a whole year's worth of content here on the channel. As of 2020, everyone has only seen half of all of the content, but I have over 52 episodes now on Extraordinary Life with Elijah. Oh, it feels amazing. It's kind of like a marathon, one year down, six more to go. Uh, another awesome first is that I'm recording the first video here in the atrium at our new office. Still a little echoey, working on some sound treatment on the walls, but I love this space. So beautiful, so bright. Uh, I love it. So in this video, starting out the new year, I want to pause here on Sunday the 7th. I love that our first video is oh, on the 7th, number of perfection. Wow, my face is starting to cramp. But start up here on the first of the year, the first episode in the new year, and reaffirm the vision and the pursuit of this channel that my heart, the vision, is to serve to please my Father's heart through the exercise of my gifts to impart grace to you to know Him more. Bowden is my extra because as I give Him good fathership, that out of my fathering of Him, that His sonship below my authority becomes a shadow and a type of the heavenly patterns that helps me to press into pursuing my father with more passion and more hunger. As I serve Bowden's needs whenever he's crying or upset, if I take the passy in it, I just, I just, I'm focused on my own needs and desires. I just want him to be quiet so that I can do whatever I want to do, go back to work or just stop being annoyed by his crying. Hashtag honest. If I just take his passy and shove it into his mouth, it, it gags him. Like, it literally makes him, it's a gag reflex and he'll spit the passy back out. In order to get him to, to pull the passy into his mouth and to hold on to it, take the passy on the end of the pacifier, and this works with all babies, just so you know, parenting tip. You tap on the end of the pacifier and that tapping, the, the vibration on his lips and through his mouth, even though they're crying, will stimulate their natural drive to nurse and they'll pull that pacifier into their mouth. You don't have to push it in, they will pull it into their mouth. Out of that, I find a beautiful insight with Jesus, shadows and types that it says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Whoever hears my voice, I will come in with him and eat with him and he with me. I think it's interesting that people often use that passage as an evangelistic verse, but in that context, it says that Jesus is knocking on the door of his church. He's speaking to his church. And so in that, Jesus waits to be wanted. And so he comes to our lives and he knocks on our lives, on, the, on a gate of our mouth to, to feed, to feast on the word, the bread of life. And that as that stimulates my passion, to draw him into myself, to feed on him, on his flesh, and to drink his blood, to commune with him. I, I swallow, I pull into myself what he is offering to me as a free gift. He doesn't force it, cram it down my throat, but he taps, he knocks, he waits to be wanted, and I pull him into myself to feed on him. Ah. Isn't that so beautiful? Number two is that if you then want to go to the next step, like the name implies, it's a pacifier. And so it pacifies lots of things. It can pacify 
crying, need for a relationship, uh, feeling tired, you just need to be comforted, so I need to pacify your emotions. Maybe you're hungry, and right now it, I can't feed you, I need a little bit of extra time to whip up your bottle or your mom to get ready to come out to nurse you. And so you throw in that pacifier, it pacifies need. It's not, it's not a solution, it just helps to get you through that specific time and season. But you wanna to test to see how hungry a baby is. Beautiful way to do that is to take your fingers, it's gonna look a little weird on camera, but to come from the top, because your finger is curved, and your palate is curved, take the tip of your finger, the pad of your finger, uh, top of their mouth and stimulate the roof of their mouth. And a baby, if it's hungry, will latch down on your finger enough to almost give you a blood blister on the tip of your finger. The little tongue starts to show just like if they're a latch on their mother and nurse full on. And if they're, they're just kind of just kind of <laughs> licking the lollipop as it were, they're probably not really that hungry, but if they just latch down and almost invert your finger off the end of your fingernail, they're telling you, man, I'm hungry. And the reason they, they latch down so hard is because of that stimulation on the top of their mouth. The shadow and the type pointing towards heaven is that in Revelation, I think it's beginning of chapter four, that John hears a voice through an open door of heaven, open door policy, and an open invitation, come up here to see what's going on. It says that Peter, in the spirit, immediately was before the throne, and I saw. I think that's so beautiful that Jesus, that he knocks on the door of our hearts, and that there is a open invitation from heaven. It comes from above our heads, down, the orientation that best matches the mouth. To, stir up hunger in the immature is from above their heads up. And so there's this invitation of Jesus, <laughs> come on up to heaven, open door policy in the spirit. I want you to see what I'm doing up here so that it can be as it is in heaven on earth. See what our father does and do hear what he says and say. Ah, oh, so beautiful and that I get to do that with my son. Ah, oh, it's just, beautiful. And so it says that blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. And so as I engage that with my son, tapping and tickling through invitation on the roof of his mouth, that it, it stirs up his hunger. And the last one is this, that after he's pulled the passy into his mouth, you can get a hold of the passy and pull on it that the best way to, to cause a baby to suck harder and harder on their pacifier or their bottle or whatever has been placed in their mouth is to pull on it. After Bowden's after it, he's on his passy, I can get a hold of the end of his passy and pull on it and actually rock him in his little bouncer by pulling on his pacifier. The best way to get a baby to spit out their pacifier is to press. As soon as you press in on a baby's pacifier to hold it in their mouth, they will stop sucking and you can just remove it from their mouth without any trouble. But if you're just pulling on it, you have to pull it out of their mouth with suction. Shadows and types, encouragement. In Hebrews chapter one, it says that are not all, A-L-L, -L, all, are not all, angels, ministering spirits sent to those who will inherit salvation. Two thirds of heaven's angels are faithful and they come to us to receive our authority, to work in chorus with us to accomplish our Father's will. There's one third fallen and they're called demons and they come to us to try to take our authority, to try to take our inheritance. And as they come to grab it and pull it away from them, they attempt to take it from us, it causes us to draw down even harder on what our Father has imparted to us by way of sustenance and the pure spiritual milk of the word, the bread of heaven that we have in our mouth, the meat of Christ in communion, feasting on his flesh. That as they attempt to take that, it causes greater hunger still. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. 
As we go into this new season, I want to affirm again out of what my son Bowden is teaching me, that's why he's my extra today, is that my heart is to serve to please my Father's heart through the exercise of my gifts to impart grace to you to know him more. That I'm reaching out to you, I'm tapping on the screen of your device saying, hey, Here's the words of my Father, causing that hunger for you to draw them into yourself, for you to, to, to feast on them of your own free will. And that as I give the invitation from heavenly places to check your hunger, to stir it up, to not tickle your ears, but to, to tickle the roof of your mouth. Oh, to tickle the roof of your mouth. Wow. My brain tripped and so did my tongue. Wow, that'll preach. Not tickling your ears, not just telling you the things that you wanna hear, telling you hard things, things that might offend you, things that, that might make you angry, that offend your mind and reveal your heart. But to tickle the roof of your mouth so that you can taste and see that our Lord, our Father is good. And to invite you to come to heavenly places, to see what he is doing, to hear what he is saying, so that our Father's will can be replicated on earth as it is in heaven to His glory and His good pleasure. That's what I'm doing. That was a really, really long thought. Yeah. As we move into the rest of this year together, I want to rekindle vision and focus on what we're doing. I'm not afraid of what darkness may do to try to come and take what the Father, what the Holy Spirit is feeding you through me. As, as darkness attacks you, comes against you, tries to take your inheritance, it's gonna make you hungrier still. I'm not afraid. Perfect love drives out all fear. So as we go into this new year, ah, so hopeful to see what our Father will do in me, with us, and in the whole world. If you subscribe to what I'm doing, hit the button, hit it, and then get it, hit the bell as well so you get notified with the new content, with the new content, meant. And if you loved this video, you didn't just like it, hit the thumbs down button. I pray blessings on our lives together. I love you guys lots. Mmm, New Year's, love them, so exciting. And I will see you in the next video, which starts now. And this guy is a monster. <sighs> it's my second time recording it because I forgot to change my camera's settings. It's all good. Pray God's grace on second place. This video will be the second time recording it. That was a bit of a kick to the gut. Mmm. It's a hard word, and giving it twice is twice as difficult. Ah, but it's a good word. It is a good word, my friends. Mm. I'm glad that you can see this side of videos that I've already posted. What the process is going into them so that you can understand whose power is behind them. Hmm. Weakness and vulnerability amongst leadership to allow their followers to see the difficulty in pressing into the Father's will is a gift of strength. And we should not hide from one another. Jesus was sorrowful unto death and sweat blood, and it's recorded in Scripture for our encouragement in our forward process in success in the greater things. I'm glad that you can see the difficulty on this side of the videos. I pray that recording them blesses your life.
Yep. Mm, Jesus, you're good. You are a sneaky brother. I like you. Hmm. Hmm. What's up, fam? Extraordinary life with Elijah. And I don't know if you've noticed the sound at the beginning of my videos at and at the end, but it's very intentional. It goes like this. <laughs> 